how is AI going to change business right now and transform and expand and change profitability of businesses? Um, you're doing some amazing things with Cloud Kitchen and AI, please. When I look generally at what's going on right now, it feels like we're entering an era of bigger is better. That if you are a large company with a strong business model, that the technology that's coming is actually going to give you competitive advantage over folks that are smaller. Like the accretion of value is going to the bigger players. And there are probably a lot of very simple things that can be done to create more profit and bigger moat on those business models is my guess. So there's just like blocking and tackling like workflows, customer support, onboarding, sales, all getting automated will make an already strong business model like supercharged. And I think for the biggest companies create trillions of dollars of value. I mean, we're doing, you know, my company's doing the future of food. It's real estate, software, and robotics for food. And there's lots of fun, practical things that are that are happening, I mean, they're, they're gonna be big, but they're, they're also practical. Um, you know, we have, a, we, have a, we have a machine that makes food. Like, uh, imagine if you were to go to Chipotle, that front line of people that is making your bowl, we have a machine that does that. So we have restaurants that are operating with no people or one person just overseeing the machine. But if there's only one person in that room, you know, you gotta, we now have a, that person talking to the machine about how the machine is doing. As if they were an employee. So, yeah, yes. So then it's, this is simple stuff, but this is where we're going now. Like, we have this in, up and running in restaurants today, where you're asking the robot, hey, is the food warm? Am I running out? This kind of thing. But we just said, well, sh you know, might as well just give it a personality. So now you can ask, like, did the Dodgers beat the Yankees today, which they did. <laughs> and you can have a conversation, and it's sort of, you, we're quickly getting into that interstellar moment where you're just interacting in a very human way. I, I've got to ask this other question just for fun. If you were, if you'd remained CEO of Uber, or were still CEO, what would you have done differently? What would, you be, what would Uber be doing now? Oh, man. <laughs> we could take the whole hour on this one. Um, I'll keep that one short. Maybe I'll give you a couple things. Um, look, we had uh, probably one of the preeminent AI labs when I left Uber. And we saw the, you know, the seminal paper out of Google, uh, the attention paper. I mean, you guys know how I rolled when I was doing Uber. Like, we'd probably be doing some pretty interesting stuff on that front. I mean, sort of in a more practical, on, a, on the more practical side, like, uh, we were starting to roll out, I mean, of course we're doing the autonomy thing, I'll, I'll put that aside, I, I think uh, Elon's gonna take care of that at this point. But we were starting to roll out, um, almost, we, we, looked at, we looked at transportation as a high-frequency trading business where we would buy trips from drivers and sell it to riders. We were a market maker. And so we were starting to set up quant teams for each city to do the high frequency trading of the trips so that we could get the lowest cost reliable ride more efficient, gain market share, get more profits, all of this. This is kind of a fun, geeky finance thing. But. One in 30 seconds. You've, been, you've disrupted two huge markets. Uh, your one piece of advice for someone here who wants to go disrupt the marketplace today, how do they, what's your piece of advice for them? Um, you know, look, I, I, I've, over time I've tried to distill what it means to innovate at speed and at scale into sort of principles or, or pillars. Uh, they, they basically are cultural values at my company, and so we've distilled it down to uh, truth, trust, and passion. And again, you know, those are high-level sort of ideas. Um, but doing those really well, each of those really well, is sort of how you innovate at speed and at scale. 
And it's, you know, there's a lot in there, but like think of the childlike playfulness and curiosity with a teenage rebelliousness mm. with a, an old man's wisdom. That's a beautiful mindset set up. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Travis.